Hey what's up guys, today I'll show you a horror thriller film, Dead Silence. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with an old tale of how, in the 6th century BC, people believed that the spirits of the dead can take control of the bodies of the living and speak through their stomach region. This was how the word ventriloquist was coined. As the credits roll, it depicts footage of an unseen man carefully designing and then making a ventriloquist doll from scratch. He deems it the perfect doll. It is a laid-back night at the apartment of a young couple, Jamie and his wife. He's trying to fix their kitchen sink in vain. When Jamie opens the door to their apartment, he sees a large nondescript box on the floor. The sender is anonymous. They open the gift and discover that it's a male ventriloquist doll. It's wearing a suit and tie and has wide and creepy eyes. Jamie's good-natured wife thinks it's all a practical joke. She even brings up the old urban legend in their hometown about Mary, a scary woman who had a lot of dolls. Jamie goes out to pick up their dinner in a restaurant. Meanwhile, his wife places the doll on their bed and covers it with a blanket. Moments later, strange things begin to happen around the apartment. Lights turn on and off, and appliances are malfunctioning. A kettle whistles on the stove, and the wife turns it off. She hears the faint sound of a child's laughter coming from the bedroom. She goes back to the bedroom and approaches the bed to uncover the blanket. But it flies off the doll and wraps around the wife's face. An unseen force slams her against the wall. Blood streams out of her mouth, and the same force drags her back into the bedroom. Jamie arrives back at their apartment with the food and one long-stemmed rose. The kettle is now furiously boiling on the stove, and he hurries to grab it. He calls for his wife, and her faint voice answers that she's in the bedroom. When he gets there, the bedroom is dark, and he slips on a puddle of her blood. He turns on the light and sees that his horny wife is on the bed and covered by the blanket. She beckons him closer and tells Jamie that she has a hormone surprise for him. But near the end of her sentence, her voice changes to that of a raspy old woman. He unfurls the blanket, only to discover his wife is dead. Her body is posed as a mannequin, and her mouth is unnaturally gaping open due to force. Her tongue was also ripped out, preventing her from giving any tongue massage ever again. Jamie steps back in shock and bumps into the ventriloquist doll on the floor. The police are called, and they take away the wife's body. They immediately suspect Jamie as the killer, since there were no signs of forced entry into the apartment. Jamie doesn't really have a concrete alibi, but he insists to the detective that his wife's death has something to do with the strange ventriloquist doll that showed up that night. He explains that in their hometown, a ventriloquist doll is a bad omen for death. When he returns to the apartment, he tears the velvet lining on the box that the doll arrived in. Behind the cloth is a wooden drawing depicting Mary and the doll, advertising their show during the town fair. This seals the deal for Jamie. He packs his bags and goes back home with the doll. He enters the large and sprawling estate he grew up in. His new stepmother greets him at the door. Jamie has a tenuous relationship with his cruel and abusive father, so he doesn't think much about his new stepmother. He hasn't seen his father for years due to his bouts of violence. So Jamie is surprised when he sees that his mercurial father is now wheelchair-ridden. He looks pale and sickly. The stepmother tells him that his father suffered a stroke a few months ago and has been reliant on his wheelchair and oxygen tank ever since. This gave the father a new lease on life, and he wants to make amends with his son. But Jamie is not interested in a family reunion. He just wants to know more about the Bloody Mary and why the town is scared of her and her dolls. In fact, Jamie's now deceased mother once read him a terrifying poem about fearing the stare of Mary. The father simply dismisses it as a small town superstition. Seeing that he will not get much help from his father, Jamie leaves. The stepmother follows him out and pleads with him that his father really is a changed man, but Jamie is not ready to forgive and forget. He tells her that his father drove his mother to kill herself. His second wife left him because she could no longer tolerate his abuse. After the visit to his childhood home, Jamie heads to the local funeral parlor. He talks with the mortician, who explains that he will pick up his wife's body once the police have released it. Jamie gets a room in the local motel. He settles into an uneasy sleep, the neon motel sign blinking intermittently by his window. The ugly doll is sitting on a chair in front of his bed. Once Jamie's sleep deepens, the doll's eyes start moving around. He then wakes up and sees the doll close to him. In the corner of the room is old Mary who stares at him creepily. Jamie hurriedly turns on the light, but the old woman disappears, and the doll is once again back in its old position. Later that night, the mortician unloads Jamie's wife's body from his car and places it on the metal slab. But his batty elderly wife distracts him by slinking inside the cellar. He urges her to go outside, but she's muttering about how she won't find her in that cellar. After he ushers her into the parlor, the mortician proceeds with embalming the wife. 
The funeral happens the next day in the local cemetery. The mortician's wife is there, and she corners Jamie. She keeps saying that Mary killed Jamie's wife, and that she's here. The mortician arrives and apologizes for his elderly wife's rudeness. But when they leave, Jamie discovers that they are right where Mary was buried. Jamie goes back to his motel room to get the doll. He drives back to the cemetery and takes the doll to Mary's grave. Beside it is a small grave, bearing the same name as the doll. He digs it up and discovers an empty coffin inside. Jamie places the doll back inside the coffin. When he puts the lid back on, the doll's head turns to look at him. But that's not the end of the doll. It follows Jamie to his car and disappears into the darkness. The detective in charge of the case of Jamie's wife ambushes Jamie in his motel room. He had dug the doll back up again, wondering why Jamie would bury it. Jamie explains that he is not burying evidence. The legend says that Mary was buried with her hundred dolls, and if you encounter her, do not scream because she will rip your tongue out. The detective doesn't believe him and is still looking at Jamie as the prime suspect for his wife's murder. The next morning, Jamie goes to the elderly woman for answers, but she is scared and avoids answering his question. The mortician then explains that his past involves Mary. Back when he was a boy, their town was bustling and had a grand theater. He went there once and watched Mary's ventriloquist show. Mary really was enchanting as a ventriloquist. She was able to animate the doll and perform realistic voices. The mortician was even featured in the show because the doll was hidden under his seat. However, Mary's act was interrupted by a big mouth boy who spoke out loud that he could see Mary's lips moving. Weeks later, the big mouth boy went missing. People suspected Mary of killing the boy because of what he said. Sometime later, Mary was murdered. Her will stated that she wanted to be buried with her 101 dolls. In addition, she also had an odd request to be fulfilled by the mortician's father. The mortician saw with his own eyes that his father turned Mary's corpse into a doll, replacing her eyes with wooden doll eyes and unhinging her mouth. After Mary's death, generations of families in the town became plagued by a curse. Many of them were mysteriously killed. Their tongues were ripped out and their corpses posed like mannequins. It turns out, Jamie's wife is just the latest victim of the curse. Jamie heads to the theater, which is now run down and dilapidated. Mary lived in one of the upstairs rooms there. The whole place is dusty and dark. Mary's old room is covered with cobwebs, and many of her things are still there. Jamie finds an old sketchbook of hers, filled with drawings of dolls and human bodies. It seems like Mary was trying to create the perfect doll. The next pages show a picture of the missing Big Mouth Boy with his full name. Jamie realizes that the boy was an ancestor of his. Suddenly, he sees Mary's reflection in the mirror. When he turns around, she's already gone. Meanwhile, the mortician catches his wife talking to the doll. He gets angry and grabs it. He places the doll inside his laboratory, but he hears his wife's voice coming from the cellar, and he assumes that she got stuck there again. The mortician crawls inside to rescue her, but it turns out to be a trap laid by Mary. She appears to him and tortures his younger self. The mortician could not help but scream. The noise he made allows Mary to claim his life and his voice. Jamie goes to his childhood home and sees his father and stepmother having dinner. He demands that his father tell him what their connection is to the big mouth boy who disappeared. The father reveals that the big mouth boy was Jamie's great uncle. When he disappeared, their family immediately suspected Mary of killing him. One night, their family members and some other townspeople formed a mob and attacked Mary in her home. They forced her to scream, and then they cut off her tongue before killing her. All the people claimed by Mary's curse were the people who killed her or their relatives. Another reason why Mary only goes after people when they scream is because they had cut off her tongue. The father also reveals that he was so cruel to Jamie in the past because he wanted his son to be far from their town and Mary's wrath. After this confession, Jamie encounters the detective. He accuses Jamie of lying about the legend of Mary, since when he asked the townspeople about her, they claim that they don't know her. What's more, the detective has discovered that all of Mary's 101 dolls were dug up and stolen from the cemetery. Jamie then receives a call. He hears the mortician's garbled voice, telling him to come to the old theater, so he can prove that Jamie didn't kill his wife. Jamie rushes to the theater. He goes straight to Mary's room upstairs, thinking that he will meet the mortician. The detective arrives there too, shortly after with a shotgun. They hear Mary faintly humming from another room. Jamie warns the detective not to scream whatever happens. The two men go through a narrow tunnel and emerge into the theater's attic. Inside are all of Mary's dolls back in their glass cases, with the exception of the boy doll that was gifted to Jamie. In the opposite corner of the room is a figure covered in a velvet cloth. Jamie uncovers it and sees a doll-like boy with red hair. 
His limbs are tied with strings, suspended above like a marionette. Jamie looks closely and announces that it's not a doll. This is the rotted corpse of the Big Mouth Boy who insulted Mary during her show. It turns out, it is true that Mary killed the Big Mouth Boy. After his death, she turned his corpse into a doll. Suddenly, the dolls begin to turn their heads one by one. On the side is a clown doll rocking on a chair, possibly enjoying a horror movie. Jamie calls the doll Mary, and she responds with a raspy voice of an old lady. She reveals that in her mission to create the perfect doll, she used both human and doll parts, like in the case of the Big Mouth Boy. Now, she wants to silence all those who had done her wrong. Jamie asks her why she killed his wife. Mary beckons him closer and answers that the wife was carrying Jamie's baby. By killing her and the fetus, Mary has successfully ended the Big Mouth Boy's bloodline forever. Out of fun, she sticks out her long juicy tongue, licks Jamie's handsome face, but spares his smelly body. He recoils in horror, and the detective shoots the clown doll. But Mary just continues to possess her many dolls, fleeing from one toy to another. Jamie and the detective set fire to the dolls, so they can weaken Mary. They flee the theater, but Mary causes the bridge to collapse. The detective screams out loud, and Mary kills him instantly. Jamie manages to swim to safety and get inside his car, but he realizes that there's still one doll left. He goes to the mortician's home and finds the mortician's wife holding his dead body. She cries out that she saw Jamie's father get the doll and leave. Jamie arrives at his childhood home, looking for his father. He finds the doll in one of the rooms. He turns on one of the lamps. That's when he sees his father sitting motionless in the corner. He reaches out a hand, and his father's body slumps forward. To his horror, the entire back of his body is hollowed out, with a wooden stick holding the body upright. It turns out, the stepmother is the perfect doll that Mary had created. She looks very much like a human, but is actually a doll. Mary possesses her and uses her to enact her revenge. She had married Jamie's father and then killed him. She is now controlling the father's body like a ventriloquist doll to reel Jamie in and kill the last member of his family. The movie ends with Jamie narrating once again the nursery rhyme about Mary. The portraits in the mansion's hallway show that all members of the family have been killed and turned into dolls by Mary. Finally, she has completed her decades-long revenge. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.